Hello, welcome to Steve's Gaming. Uh, this is something I've been threatening to, well, threatening myself to do for a while, and I just thought if I don't do it now, I never will. So I'm just going to waffle. I'm going to waffle a lot. So it's like 99% of people won't be interested in this, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. You know, go watch something cool or something, you know. I'm, I'm just going to waffle. Um, right, what I'm going to talk about is me and gaming. Me and gaming. This is this is mainly for my record, but I am absolutely making it public for like the 0.1% of people that might be interested in something I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay, so let me say, I was born in the 60s, yes I'm not old, in Bradford, that's West Yorkshire, and obviously didn't, gaming didn't exist in the early 60s, well not that, not that I knew of anyway. Um, my granddad died in 1972, which was a bit of a shock because nobody expected it. It's like, you know, wow, that was that was bad. And um, my family decided to up sticks to Blackpool, which pissed me off greatly because I didn't want to go. I was more than happy there. And the place the place we lived at, we just moved there a couple of years earlier. And, and I loved that little house. I really did. And it's the only time I've lived in the house where I had a garden. I mean, front and back. It was lovely. It was a lovely little house it was. Anyway... My family said, no, we're going to Blackpool. So I've, obviously, you know, I'm a kid at the time, so I had no say in it. So, so I dragged us off to Blackpool. We came to Blackpool, that's mid-73. And we got some flats. Why we got flats, I don't know. But they got, we got these flats and by God, they were in a state. All the bloody ceilings were coming down. And all, so anyway, it anyway, doesn't matter. That's beside the point. So I came to Blackpool in 73. Um, wasn't a fan of it, but, you know, it was okay. But by like 76, 77, I'm beginning to notice like mechanical arcade machines in arcades. And it's like the ones like the ones where like you fly the helicopter around. It's like it's like it's like on a helicopter on a stick, and you fly it around with the controls. You know, it probably seems really terrible now, but back then it was it was so exciting. You know, it was sort of like painted in luminous colours, and it looks so cool. Forget that, forget what that was called now. And it was like the basketball game. With all these little holes where the basketball goes, and you press the corresponding button and it'll blow it out. Sort of mechanical, mechanical thing, you know, not, 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 um, what would you call video games these days. But arcades had loads of these mechanical games, and I loved them. I really did. You know, all my spare money went to the arcades and these, these games. And uh, then, like, 77 or whatever, it sort of began to explore these things like Pong. And uh, Space War, I think Space Wars by Space Wars by Cinematronic, Vector Game. Oh my God! The first time I saw Space War, it blew my mind. I mean, the cabinet's like it's massive. It's like a, it's like half an house. <laughs> it's this massive, big bastard, bloody black and white cabinet. But oh, it was so cool. The thing is, it's mate. It was like a two-player game. There was no single-player Space War. I mean, you could you could start one player and just fly around, but there's nothing to do. There's nothing to shoot. No enemies to shoot at you. It was just like basically a star in the middle, which depends on what game mode you had, sometimes sucked you in, sometimes didn't. And it had like your ship and the other player's ship. No AI ships. So if you've played on your own, you were busy. There's nothing to do. But I loved that game. I've forever tried to drag people. God, have a game of this, you know. And the thing I loved about it was if you, if you got the enemy, sh enemy ship, with a, a sort of a glancing shot, a bit of his shit would break off. And I always thought that was just so cool. Loved it to bits. And then, of course, like, you know, Space Invaders State. Now, that was the thing that really exploded. I um, mean, in Blackpool, I have never seen a thing like I saw in, like, mid-78 or whatever. I, went, I mean, one arcade, what you call it, well, it was in the Golden Mile, what you call it, the Golden Mile these days. When, when I played alone, I mean, I had like 130 Space Invader games, Space Invader machines, all the same, no different ones. It's like Space Invaders 1 or 2 or Space Invaders Revenge, just Space Invaders, the original. And row upon row upon row of Space Invaders. And <laughs> I tell you, I wish I had a bloody uh, camcorder or a bloody mobile phone back then to record it because the sight and sound was phenomenal. It was wonderful, it was. It really was. Uh, space Invaders just blew me away, and then uh, you know, almost almost spent money going to the arcades. All spent money, and then uh, I think my first, my first thing that really just well not the first thing, the first color thing that was back in the back in the mid to late seventies, the only color thing you get was like colored film put over the screen, <laughs> it's like colored gels, and when when you like a uh, 
uh, an object or a sprite, if you want to call it, behind that particular thing, it would, it would change it that colour. But that's the only way, it's just like a coloured film over the screen, so it wasn't really colour. And I remember one day, because what I used to do at one point, I used to, used to like, um, go in town, do what I did. And then, do, you know, do what I had to do in town. And then I had to, and walked home. And I used to have like 10 or 20p in each arcade on the way home. Which sounds like nothing, but there were so, so many arcades back then. It was, you know, it was, it was a lot. And I remember one day, I went to the Central Pier, which was not a place I went often. Because their machines were pretty crappy. They didn't have any really good ones in. There were some arcades that had, always had really good stuff in, you know. Central Pier wasn't really, wasn't that good. But I popped in anyway. And I was mooching around. And by that point, I think I, had, I think I had 10p left or 20p left, and I blew it on machines, and I don't know what machines were. Anyway, I'm just mooching, I'm just looking at what machines are now. On the way, I'm sort of there, just thinking, I best go out now. When the wheel, these, these two guys wheel this, wheel this cabin, I swear this will stay to me until, until I die. They wheeled this cabin and plugged it in, and it was Galaxian. And my jaw hit the absolute floor. I mean, I was like, these... Enemies, the aliens were a full color, no no colored gel, no no colored strips on the screen. They actually, their pixels were colored. I mean, wow. I mean, fuck, I can't, you can't say what what an impression that had on somebody. I mean, most people these days, you tell them that and you say, well, what the fuck, you mad or something? No, but I tell you, it, it blew my mind, really. I mean, my jaw was on the floor. And I must have stood over 20 minutes just watching Galaxian. Because it was like doing the attract mode, and but I, I had no money because I spent like I spent like my last ten or twenty p on something I, I can't, can't remember what now. But I spent like twenty minutes just looking at this, hoping someone somebody would come along and play it so I could see what it was like and hear what it sounded like when we were actually playing it. Nobody did. Nobody did. So like twenty minutes looking at this, I thought, oh my god, this looks fantastic. Look at these aliens, not just aliens moving about, but they swoop down, they dive down, and it's full colour. I mean, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's, oh my god, you know, that was so excited. It's like it's like you know, it's like the first time you have sex. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> it will, it will stay. It will it'll stick stick to me forever. It really will. Anyway, so yeah. So I've just got in the arcades, all the arcades, as, as, as much as I could, you know, as much as, as much as I could, which is when I had when I had cash. Um, this is that mission I wasn't going to say, but I will just, just to be honest, just to be totally truthful. We had flats, like I said, and uh, this is going to be not a nice thing to say, but I have to be honest. In the old way, we had a phone, we had a pay phone, people could use, you know, phone, whatever. And I, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel guilty saying this afterwards. I'm gonna feel, why did you say that, man? Why did you say that? But what the hell? I had the key, or should I say, I knew where the key was to this. So I frequently used the key, like at one o'clock in the morning or whatever, get a handful of ten p's and lock it again, and that would do me for the next couple of days in the arcade. And that's a horrible thing to say, I mean, because I'm robbing off my family. I mean, that's, there's two, two times in my life when I've stolen and I'm not proud of it. I'm very ashamed. That is one of it. That is, that is one time. And the other time was totally accidental. I am, I'm, I'm guessing most people just won't believe me, but I, I swear it was accidental. I was in a pet shop at the time. I had a tropical fish tank. Why I did that? I don't know. I think one birthday, mum said, what do you want? I said, I don't know. She said, oh, get a tropical fish tank. And I thought, well, why would I want that? She said, I'd like them. So I I ended, I ended up with one anyway, so I, I, don't, I don't know why it went, but I ended up one, with one. Anyway, I went to the, I went to this pet shop, uh, Blackpool, what, just off Waterloo Road, and I, I was what this, I went just what this like is a uh, carton of fish food, and this guy's yab, yab, rabbiting on at these, these customers. I'm stood there with a the fish food in my hand. It's like a little, it's like a little pot you think you put with a ring pull on it. I stood there for like half an hour, just jabbering away. I was thinking, screw this, this is ridiculous. I got to the point where I thought, screw it, I'll, 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 let's not bother. I'll come back tomorrow. So I, I left, and this, this is true. On my life, this is true. It wasn't until I was about halfway home when I stuck my hand in my pocket, and I found that fish food, and I felt so bad. I felt so guilty. I thought. If I take it back now, they won't believe. They won't believe I've done it accidentally. They won't believe I didn't mean to do it. But did, did I use it? No, I didn't. I couldn't. I threw it. I threw it in a bin. But 
That's the only time Nick, but yeah, like I said, I'm full of tempes occasionally from the phone, which is horrible, but I'm being honest here. So yes, you can see what's the arcades all the time. Uh, I think um, so first, the first computer consoles I had, first, first consoles I had was uh, 2600. You know, I said, what do you want for Christmas? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I went to Lewis's, I think it was 78. And Lewis has had an Atari 2600 on. And um, I don't know what game it was, probably events, but no, probably combat or something, because that's the one that comes with it. And I said, look at this, on this, on this. And she said, sure, yeah. But you couldn't buy one off the shelf then. It says you got you got a, you got a pre order which is like, everybody pre orders things nowadays, but back then it didn't exist. You know, pre ordering, what the hell? So we had to order one, which is fine because it was a Christmas present. Anyway, the, the phone up and said, it's cool, blah, blah, blah. So we go down to pick it up, me and my mum. And, um, well, I'll say my mum because my dad didn't exist. I mean, he, he left when I was two. He scarpered, so, you know. He did turn up one more time. This is, like, mind-blowingly ridiculous. Why he had the balls to do this is beyond me. He turned up on my 18th birthday and gave him 150p. 50 pence, 50 pence, she, she literally threw it at him, that's the only time I've, that's the only time he's, he's come back in my life, anyway, so yeah, went, went to pick this uh, 2600 up, and there was a guy there, really white one for his kid, and man, he, he said, he said, I'll let me buy it off you, because he was, like, didn't, didn't have any in stock, you know, he had to, he had to pre-order him, like I said, I said, let me buy it off you, my mum said, well, it's, it's your Christmas present, do what you want, and me being a selfish child, with no bloody thought, said, no, I'm sorry, no. But when you really think about it, because he said, I'll pay you double. And I said, no, I want it. Very selfish, very stupid. Because if I'd have thought, my brain should have said, hey, man, hey, Steve, look, you're not going to get one for Christmas Day. you probably get one a couple of weeks later. And he got double the money so he can buy himself two or three games for, to go with it. Why don't you do that? But I didn't. I was a selfish asshole, asshole, and I said no. And I took it home and I loved it. Uh, from 2600, I went to uh, I wanted to get into computers because I used to buy computer magazines all the time, and I was so excited by them. Really wanted an Atari 800, but the price of it was absolutely sky high. No way, no way could we afford an 800. Not even a 400. So I ended up with a ZX81. A Sinclair ZX81, 1K, black and white, no sound. Sounds dreadful, probably to most people, but I fell in love with that machine. I fell in love with it. And a few months later, I got a RAM pack, 16K RAM pack, and you know, that led to other things. So, for the moment, let me get back to the arcade. So, they used to have an arcade exhibition here every year, uh, three days every year. It was held in different places. Uh, very early 80s, I think it was 79, 80, it was like in the, the Golden Mile Centre itself. And then later on it moved to uh, the Winter Gardens. And it was trade only. They showed all the latest arcade games before they were in the arcades and they're on free play. So you can imagine me, my eyes like, sort of like bloody pound signs popped up in them, like sort of a like Bugs Bunny cartoon or something like, oh my God. Well, the thing about it is, <laughs> At this time, we'd sold the flats and we and mum got a, a, a general shop on Waterloo Road, so like fags and booze and beer and that sort of thing, you know, just you know, normal shopping, general general shop. Why, I don't know. I mean, I digress, but she got it for me because I was disabled, got a lot of problems, and she said, I'll get, we'll get your business for you. And she got this shop. Now, I'd never, I mean, I love her beyond words. She's still around, thankfully. Touch wood, still be a while. But I'll never understand why she didn't come to me and say, look, we're going to get a business and it's for you to keep you going. Because you know you've got your problems, whatever. What are you interested in? What kind of business would you would you like to work in? But no, she just said, I got, got a shop. Which, be honest, I wasn't interested. I wasn't interested in selling bloody fags and booze and bloody Cornish patties and bloody fig rolls and bloody whatever it didn't interest me you know i mean obviously i would have loved like a computer shop but i was no way because you probably needed a staggering amount of money for that sort of thing but maybe we could have met somewhere in the middle you know and just gone something away from a bloody general shop anyway anyway 
I'm digressing again. So we had this shop, and I knew this arcade exhibition was trade only. So just on the off chance, we tried to pull a bit of a wheeze. I applied for for um, <laughs> passes. You get to you get you to get passes at that time, and I put my mum's business down. Not expecting anything to happen, but a while later, I don't know if it was a week or a month or whatever, a while later, a thing comes through the post with your passes. I'm like, you are joking. Is this a wind-up? I mean, it's actually worked. It's actually worked. I can't believe it. Then we were with passes for the arcade exhibition with uh, Sandra's written on it, which was the name of my mum's shop, Sandra's. And we go to the arcade exhibition and, yep, waltz straight in. Waltz straight in. Through, through, I, think was, I think the first time was 80 or 80. Yeah, it was 80. I think the first one I went to was like 1980. And it goes straight in and it's like, this, I mean, I don't believe in gods, gods, heaven, hell. I don't believe in any of that bullshit. To me, it's all the bollocks. I won't get into that because it might offend somebody. I don't want, I don't mean that. I don't want to offend anybody. But to me, I'm not interested in that. I don't believe it. But this was my heaven. Walking into this massive place with hundreds of arcade cabinets that are so new, they're not in the arcade yet, and they're on free play. Can you imagine how, how I felt? This is what I would have loved, like a camcorder or a, a smartphone back then, just to record all the stuff while I was walking around and seeing all the games. Oh, it was great. It was, oh, man, it, it was just, it was, it was phenomenal. And to, and to this day, is this as sad as this sounds? And it is very sad, incredibly sad to some people, but... They were the happiest years of my life. They're like, they're like the the uh, the six or seven years in a row I went to this three days every year. As sad as it sounds, I've never been happier. I don't I don't mean that to go off and get you know as a slight against my family or my missus or whatever. It's not, but I was just like in in heaven. It was like in heaven. I used to go in there in the morning, nine o'clock, and I used to leave at half five when I locked the door. I was in there three days, every single minute, playing all the games on free play. And the great thing is, you get legs get tired, you just go and sit in a sit-down game, go play a hard drive it for an hour or something, or whatever, or this or that. And you get hungry, it's all right, because they've got free food. They're giving free food to me, like popcorn in 30 different flavours, or donuts, or whatever, and you just go and get, get a sample. So that year, though, I went year after year, and I think it's about 86, 87 or whatever until I stopped going. I don't, I don't, think, I don't know if it stopped or I stopped, I stopped going or whatever. But, but the years I went, oh man, it was heavenly. It was. These, these arcade games, brand new ones, not even seen. And you can play them all day long. Jeez. Oh, I mean, some people might be bored after 20 minutes or something, but oh, I, was in, I, was, <laughs> I was in absolute heaven, I was. I really was. Wonderful, wonderful. So he said, what's the greatest times of my, my life? It's, yeah, as sad as it is, those were just, just wonderful times. Yeah. So, yeah, I was on the next 81. Um, I think it was 80. I think it was 81. Yeah. Anyway, I, I had a big birthday coming up. And mum said, what do you want for your birthday? You can have... Uh, either a present or a holiday. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, what the hell would I want a bloody holiday? What the hell do I want to go on bloody holiday for? I mean, I don't drink. I hate the sun. What the hell am I going on holiday for? Besides, once, once it's like your week or your fortnight's up, that's it, it's gone forever. Pfft, finished. What's the point? No. I want a new computer. <laughs> so I says, okay, pick what computer you want. And uh, if we can afford it, you can have it for your birthday, all right? Okay, so like I said, I used to buy all the, all the bloody computer magazines I could afford. And look, not just certain ones, all the ones I can afford. And I was looking through what's, what's the best computer to buy now? What's the look at? What's the look at? And I was looking at, I was looking at maybe the Acorn Atom, because it's like 81 or whatever. And I thought, mm, Acorn Atom, maybe, I don't know what. And then they started talking about his new computer coming out called the BBC. BBC by Acorn. So I looked into that, saw some pictures of it, and I thought, ooh, that looks nice. Big cream, big bastard computer with a beautiful looking keyboard and red function keys. 
Oh, oh that looks nice. So I've bit, uh, read a bit more into it. I thought, oh, expensive, but you know, a special birthday. Maybe we can go to it. And uh, like that Model A and Model B. I thought, I showed Mum. I said, you know, they do Model A and Model B. And she says, oh, which one, which, which one do you want? I said, well, the B is the best. So she says, okay. Now, good luck about this was we had an auntie called Amy. She, she still she lived, still lived in Bradford, like where we used to live there. And she used to come over like four or five times a year, spend a few days with us. Oh, so she's, a, she's, a, she's a lovely woman. She really was. She's my, ice cream mad. Ice cream mad. So whenever she came over, she took me out for uh, ice cream. <laughs> Ice cream, and she loved bloody lemon meringue pie. So I, I used to I used to make one for her when she come around. So I used to make lemon meringue pie for her, and then she took me for an ice cream. And she was a, she was a lovely woman. Anyway, she she used to work as a secretary for a, a company. I don't know which company, but the uh, it was a distributor of acorn. It's like yeah, okay, this is cool. So she said, you know, this person I work, they they sell these. They got a room full of them. Blah blah. Why don't you come over and have a look? So I went, I went and stayed the weekend with her in Bradford. I used to do that occasionally, every, every, every few years, just spend the weekend for, with her. And yeah, I got into this, I got into this, I'm, I'm not sure if it was Acorn themselves, or if it was like a, just a distributor of Acorn. But I went into this shop and they must have had about, oh, I don't know, maybe 16, 18 BBCs. They didn't have any other computers, it was just BBCs. I had like several rolls of BBCs, running all kinds of games and that. And obviously me, I was like, you know, oh wow, yes, I want this. So they had that paid for my babe. There it was, BBC, ready to go. You got so much money left because I asked, you know, all, all the um, pens and relatives, what do you want for your birthday? Give me money so I can buy games from your new computer. So I went there loaded with cash, you know. So after I got, I got my babe, I went on picking games. And if I remember rightly, I think I got Snapper, I got Planetoid, um, oh, a couple of others, I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, it gets them go back to go back to Amy's flat, and um, I had a little portable black and white TV. And when I say a black, like a five-inch screen, <laughs> it was a five-inch screen. It was it was you could carry it. You could carry it. At one side, it had like a five-inch five black and white screen. And the other side, it had like a tape tape deck. So it's like a, you had like radio, tape deck, and TV all in one. It was a really cool little thing. And I got a BBC out to check it up and put it onto this. So I was playing like Planetoid on the BBC in black and white, a five, five inch screen, but it was great. It was really cool. Yeah, it was really good. And, and she helped me even after that when I, when I couldn't get games. Like I wanted, I really wanted, um, what was that bloody Donkey Kong game? That was really, really cool. Oh God. I think it was by program, micro power or program power or something. But bloody hell. It'll come to me as soon as I stop this. And I, I wanted this killer gorilla. That was it. Killer gorilla. I really wanted that. That's great. But I couldn't get it anywhere around here. I, could, I, I couldn't get it. None of the shops had it. And um, for some reason, you couldn't like pay for it and they'd get it for you. None of the shops here would do that. If they haven't got it in stock, tough shit, man. So I said, I want this game. Can you get it for me? She said, yeah, no problem. So she got it from that place for me. And uh, that was brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sad note on on Amy. She was uh, she she was murdered in 1994. She she was in protected she was in protected housing. You know where they look at where they have like uh, these people are supposed to look after you. They got like like an intercom in your room and they say every morning and say how are you sort of thing. You know because I used to still stay there occasionally. And uh, yeah, she she was she was murdered by this guy. And they got him, but it took them like 24 25 years to catch him. Absolute scum. Bastard. Give me five minutes with a cunt in a jail cell, really. So, yeah. So, I had a beep, and um, I mostly enjoyed it. I tried to think it was basic, but I'm, I'm pretty bloody dumb. Um, I can do a little things, but my brain's not wired, not really good to do much. Play some good games with it. Uh, the only thing I hated about the beep was the, the official joysticks. My god, these were shite. These were absolute shite. I had some, and oh man, you, you, like, you like you held them, and they were really uncomfortable to hold. They had like a, a button, it's supposed to be a trigger in front, but the weird thing is the joystick, and these tiny, these, these big 
big bulky thing you hold, and at the top is like this tiny little joystick that you move around, and it didn't self censor. It made some games an absolute bloody. You try and play Rocket Raid on it, it was this bloody nightmare. Oh, they were terrible. Because they were analog. They were analog. I mean, if it was self censored, it would be, it'd be, you know, it would help a lot, but it didn't. Oh, they were just they were terrible. Anyway, at that time, I I'd, uh, I got to mates with a guy across the road, and he, he, he had a Spectrum. And we used to play games on my BBC and play games on his Spectrum. And I know, I'll notice more and more that. Although the Spectrum looks crappy and looks like a toy compared to the BBC, you know, just looking at the physical things, you know, his games just blew my mind. He seems to have a far wider, more diverse library. And I started looking more and more into, into Spectrum and stuff. And I thought, I want one of these. I, I, I want one of these. I want a Spectrum. But I couldn't afford one. So I, I put an advert. Didn't, internet didn't exist back then. No, no eBay. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. I put an advert in the paper, PBC for sale, and this guy came around to look at it. And my mother was not amused because it was a birthday present, like the year before or whatever. But I wanted the spectrum so bad and I couldn't afford it. And I thought, if I save up, it's going to take me a bloody eight months. <laughs> so I sold, I sold him my babe, and she was pissed off, but she was okay, she was okay after a few days. And I went in town, got a Spectrum, 48k, and I loved it. I mean, yes, yes, look at me, look at it. It feels, it feels. I'm, I'm sorry, it just feels looks crappy. It feels crappy. The keyboard is dreadful, but the games are just so good, you know. It was just, I just, I loved my time with the Spectrum. I really did. And I upgraded the keyboard. I got a DK on its keyboard eventually, and that was really nice. That was really cool. Um, yeah, from the Spectrum, I, uh, I went to Commodore 64, and I'll tell you the game that blew my mind, I was, I was, went in town looking at the game shop, and, and I, uh, I see this crowd around this game, around this, on this TV, when they're showing the games and that, and I hear this game, and I look at it, and I think, wow, I look at this game, and it blows my mind, the animation, and the sound, it's just amazing, and it, it was um, impossible mission. It was impossible mission. I just thought that is brilliant. I want a Commodore 64. <laughs> so, yeah, there's still some spectrum. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. What, what I thought uh, we had a place called Rumbelows, and you could do something called HP, and it could, it could be like decide what you want to get, and you could pay so much a month. But you didn't have to wait until you'd paid it all off to get your item, you know. You get it and it, from, from day one and you'd, you'd, you'd pay it off. So I wanted to come on 64 from Rumbleos on HP. Uh, but you needed to, I think you needed to be a, an householder or something to actually sign the paperwork, which obviously I wasn't. So I asked you, um, you're going to sign it? She says, she says Says, what do you want to sign it? I said, I can't sign it. You know, I, I don't have the, I'm, not, I'm not a householder. You need to sign it. Oh, why do you need that? Well, so, well, so I guess it's, you know, if, if I don't pay, they'll come to you knocking on, or knocking on your door to pay. <laughs> I said, but I, where am I going to go? You know, I'm not going to do a run <laughs> So she said, okay. So I went down to Rumbleos, signed the paperwork, blah, blah, blah. It was so much a month, I can't remember now. But they didn't have any in stock. Okay, fair enough. So I waited. And it was like two or three weeks, and we've got one. So I go down, grabs it, takes it home, and I, I, was, I was living somewhere else, away from him on the back then. Took, took it home, and it was an original Commodore 64, you know, not, 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 not the C. And as soon as I opened this Commodore 64, I thought, that's not quite right, because there's like drawing, there's like pen marks on the front of it. I was thinking, this is not quite right. And the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking it's like a second hand one or somebody's took it back. So I so thought, I'm paying through the nose for this for so for like bloody two years or whatever. I'm not having this shit. So I went back to the shop and I said, look, how is this new? I'm paying for a new one. That's not new. So after about bloody 20 minutes waffling backwards and forwards, I said, all right, we'll keep it then. We'll get another one. But we haven't got any in stock. We'll have to order it. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so I waited another two, three weeks, and they, they gave me another one, which was fine, and it was definitely brand new. It's all in bags and everything. 
So that's how I got a Commodore 64, and I loved it to bits. I really did. A um, few years later, uh, what is it? Disk drive? So my mate had a 1541. My god, those 1541s. If that, so if that drops on the edit, it'd bloody kill you. I think it's a way, a way same as that bloody half an ounce or something. Those, they, were such, they were such beasts. And I used to borrow it on occasion. They let me have it for a weekend or something. And I'd borrow it and take it home. And it was so bloody heavy, you know? So, uh, what did it, I think it was like Christmas come around. What is it? Uh, 1541. Yeah. Okay, so I, I ordered a disk drive. This drive arrives, it's not a 1541, it's 1541 too. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, it's probably a new one, better one, brilliant, great. Oh boy, was I mistaken. Jesus Christ. Less than two weeks into it, it broke down. It just stopped doing anything. So I took it back. Right, it's not working, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'll give you another one. Right, okay, 1541 too, take it home. Three weeks down the line, stops working. Take it back. We haven't got any more, but I'll send it away for repair. Okay, fine. So they had like, an, I think it was close to a month. And it came back. And bugger me, within like less than a week, it broke again. I, I, by this time, I was just so pissed. I, again, it's just like the third, third time. What the hell? Don't worry about it. We'll repair it. Not a problem. So I wait, and it, another two weeks comes back. Starts working. Yeah, one week, two week. I think, job sorted, we're great. No, three weeks later, died again. And I took it back. And luckily the guy from the computer shop was a really nice, a really friendly guy. And I said, this is, this is, this is not on. I, I, there's no point repairing it. I just, no good. No good. He said, well, we've got another drive in. It's not a Commodore one. It's uh, an Oceanic, Oceanic drive. But it was, it's coming on 64 compatible. I said, well, is it the same price? He says, yeah, okay. So I think I get this Oceanic one. And to be honest, it doesn't look as impressive as the nice, you know, big chunky Commodore one. But I take the Oceanic drive home, set it up. And it never missed a beat. For the years I had it, it, it never failed. It was absolutely brilliant. It was a wonderful drive. Wonderful drive. Now, I know my mate had no problems with his 1541, so they're good. But for me, in my brain, so it says 1541 too, I think, shite. Absolute bag of shite. <laughs> so from the Commodore 64, I went to the Atari 800. Why? I don't know. I think I'd always had a thing in my mind about Star Raiders, because when I was looking for my first computer... And I ended up with a ZX81. I was looking at the shop windows and he always had Star Raiders running on the Atari 800. And there was a massive space fan. I wanted to play that so much, but the Atari 800 and even the Atari 400 was just far, far too expensive. Couldn't do it. So I think in my mind there was something sat there saying that you've got to play Star Raiders. You've got to buy an Atari just to play bloody Star Raiders. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, I, got, I think I sold my Commodore 64. And I got an Atari 800XL, which is a beautiful computer. Really, really lovely machine. But, oh, the tape deck. Fuck the tape deck. Oh, I think it was, what, the 1010? Yeah, I think it was. Did, did, the disk drive was a 1050, weren't it? The tape deck was 1010. That tape deck was a pile of donkey shit. I swear. The buttons on it are designed so bad, the break. The break at a drop of a heart, those buttons. I mean, the amount of times I repaired those buttons when they when they snapped, it's just must must be in double figures. I I never did have a drive. I never did have a a floppy drive for me Atari, like a 1050. It was just too expensive. Even back then, it was too expensive. Even even when the 800 XL was out, it was just too expensive. So I never did. I never did have one. So I think from there, I um I went to the Mega 500. Which was a great machine, really good. Uh, so I'm a friend. A friend had one. I saw him invest it around a couple of nights, and we played games on it. And I thought this is just wow, really, really good. Um, he had Kickstarter, Kickstarter 1.2. So save my pennies or whatever, you know. Sold some stuff, blah blah blah. Eventually got an Amiga, got an Amiga A500, 
Uh, my man came out of the box with a kickstart 1.3, which was okay, but <laughs> unfortunately, a couple of games that he uh, copied for me wouldn't work on 1.3, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It was great. My 500 was brilliant. It was really good, easy for years. It's brilliant. The only time I got rid of it was when I upgraded to an Amiga 1200, which I have mixed feelings about 1200. It's a lovely machine. Uh, I took mine out of the case and put it in a tower, like in our PC tower, and I, I, painted, it, I painted it British Racing Green, the tower. And 1200 was great. Yeah. Oh, that's, some, that's something I need to tell you. When I had the 500, I uh, one Christmas I got a hard drive. I think it was the, the, the A590, was it? The A590? It was like a hard drive that plugs on the side of the A500 and the expansion port. Uh, that was staggeringly 350 quid. 350 quid. And it was 20 megabytes. We're not talking gigabytes here. We're talking megabytes. 20 megabytes and the reason it was so expensive was it was official commodore one and it had extra ram on board so it, it boosted your memory which was really good because at that time i was heavily into ray tracing and graphics you know so it was like using um table silver imagine sculpt animate 3d sculpt animate 4d cinema cinema 4d all that sort of stuff, light wave. I, I love that sort of. I was heavily into ray tracing, so uh, extra RAM. Yeah, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> One time though, I, I, I keep telling people this because it still astonishes me. One time, how I didn't fry that hard drive on my computer, I will never know because I know it's one day my hard drive's not working. Turn my A500 on, computer goes on, hard drive's not working. And I'll try, I'll reach, I'll turn it on and off several times, try this, try that. Not working. Oh, it's, it's not working. It was only like 10, 15 minutes later when I unplugged the, dr <laughs> the drive from the the Amiga that I realised why it wasn't working and how the hell it didn't fry something I will never know because between the on the edge connector there was actually a bloody Kit Kat wrapper from an old Kit Kat chocolate chocolate bar and back in those days I thought they still do or not. Uh, there was foil. It was metal foil. So it was obviously shorting something when it when it touching the edge connector, but how it didn't fry the computer, I'll never know. I guess I just dodged a bullet that day. I, I really did. Uh, it reminds me of the time when I put my hard drive cabling backwards on my A1200 in my tower, turned it on, and the cable lit up with bloody smoke and set a fire. <laughs> That's not good. And it's not easy putting one in upside up. I mean, a cable in the wrong way around. It's not easy. It's because it was it was in the tower and it was sort of dangling upside down and. Yeah, so that was not good. <laughs> so for my Amiga, um, yeah, my Amiga 1200, yeah, I went through several motherboards on a 1200. I don't know what it was. It used to, it's, my computer used to have a knack of, it used to have the habit of toasting itself. So I'm oh, going you know, get another get another 1200 motherboard, and it worked for another six months, and it, then it'd fry itself again. I don't know what it was. There was something in there that was causing the issue, and I never got down to it. I never actually figured out what it was. Um, I did one day make, make play the biggest purchase ever, which, oh my god, my big, biggest regret. This is my biggest regret ever when it comes to gaming. Um, I bought a Blizzard 060 PPC accelerator card. And this was in like 1999, and this was 550 quid. 550 quid for an accelerator card. Because I wanted it, I was still heavily into ray tracing. I wanted it to speed up the bloody ray tracing software. I didn't have to leave the computer on overnight to do a bloody single bloody frame or something, you know, full, full, on, on, on a high quality. The amount of times I left it on overnight rendering is just <laughs> it's crazy. So I spent a 550 quid on this. Blizzard PPC, well, uh, all six all PPC. And I got it. The reason I was swayed to, towards that was because I was, I was using Imagine the software, and I was in contact with one of the, the, the developers of the software, and he was doing a, a new version of Imagine, 
uh, that would work on the PPC accelerator chip, which is obviously way faster than the O6 O. Way faster. So because he said that, I sort of jumped in on the early access thing. It wasn't called early access then, but <laughs> we did we did a deal. I could I, I could pay him monthly until until the, until I paid for the for the software. So we did that, and I got this O6 uh, O PPC. And uh, my God, what a massive disappointment! I mean, yeah, it's great for some things, but when it came to rendering, the thing that blew my mind is I paid 550 for this, and a friend of mine at the same time paid 550 for his. He bought, he bought a brand new PC, so the PC, you know, the tower, the keyboard, the mouse, the monitor, the whole shebang, it costs the same as my accelerator card. Now, the thing about Imagine, it was on the PC and the Amiga. Same software. So we did a render test, and boy, did I regret this. With my new £550 accelerator card and his £550 complete PC, we loaded the same scene in Imagine and rendered it. And without a word of a lie, he's rendered it 11 times faster. You can't put into words how much my heart sunk. I just put all the money into this thing and it's fucking slow. And he's bought a complete PC, monitor and everything, and it's 11 times faster. On that day, I can I can say now, I can swear now, that day, I knew my Amiga days were over. That was it, I was it, I knew it, I knew it. And, uh, oh my God, I was, <laughs> I was so gutted, I really was. So I was trying to sell my Amiga, and luckily it was the accelerator card that really got me to sell it because I was trying to sell it to this person, that person. I don't want that. It's in the custom case. Don't want that. Blah blah blah. But I want the card. I don't want to sell the card. It's the whole thing and nothing. Anyway, I found this guy I wanted to buy it, and I sold him it for six hundred quid. So he got he got the five hundred and fifty pound accelerator card plus the entire computer for another for another fifty quid. And then that's that's when I moved to PC. But that will always stick in my mind. I spent the same amount of money on a card as he bought the entire bloody machine. And his renders the same scene 11 times faster. I'll never forget that because my heart sunk so far, so far down. It was in my shoes. I thought, no, I don't believe this. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting mine to blitz him. I thought it might be similar, you know. You know maybe like. 20% either way sort of thing, but no, 11 times, I couldn't believe it, I was just so gutted, I was so gutted, I mean, if that accelerator card didn't cost so much, I would have taken it out and thrown it across the room, but you can't do that with 550 quid accelerator card, so then I moved to PC and I've been PC ever since, um, yeah, with Windows, still use Windows today, do I like Windows? No. I don't like Windows. I can see all its flaws, and by God, it's got some flaws. It's bloated as fuck. It's got security issues. I don't like it. I use it, but I don't like it. I know some people like use Linux. I think uh, Colin, Colin Jones, Ponder, he uses Linux, and I'm sure he's delighted with it. And I'm sure most people are. I'm. It's not a route I want to go down. I feel I'm too old to learn a new operating system because I'm too lazy and I, and I don't want I don't want to install a new op, a new system and start from scratch learning how to use it I just want I just want ease of use I, I'm lazy I just want to turn it on and do something I don't want to learn how to do something for bloody days or whatever so I don't I mean no you know I'm not one of these people who think it's Windows fantastic it's not it's shit I use it because it's convenient and it's easy and I'm lazy but I I, I it's shit it's shit. So, other things I've had. Uh, obviously, I had a Game Boy. Who has had a Game Boy? I love the Game Boy. Um, I've had a PlayStation 1 I really enjoyed. I've had a PlayStation 2 I really enjoyed. I had a PS3 for a short amount of time. Uh, a PlayStation 4 I had, I quite enjoyed that. I did buy a PlayStation 5 on uh, release. I got it pre-ordered day one. And I just think that generation was just a massive letdown. A PS5 generation. If not for the SSD, it's, it's no different from a PS4. You know? If not for that SSD. 
I can't say that PS5 games blow me up, blow me away. They've not. They've not. So I think the PS5 is one of the weakest PlayStations for for quite a while. What else have I had? I've had an Xbox, original Xbox. I still have an original Xbox that's hacked, modded, and got a hard drive full of games, which I should use more because it's got some really good games like the original you know, GTA Vice City and GTA San Andreas, and before they were well, before all the bloody music was ripped out of them for the bloody remakes. <laughs> Um, I had an Xbox 360. I said several Xbox 360s because I used to like dying for the fun of it, Red Ring of Death, and it had a lot of problems. I must have gone through four or five different ones of those. But that said, the 360 had some really, really cool games. Uh, I was when they came out the next gen, next gen, you know, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. At that time, I had an Xbox 360, and I thought, fine, just buy the new Xbox. But it is like, no, it's coming with a connect. And you can't not have a connect. If you, you know, you gotta have this connect whether you want it or not. You gotta have this camera in the house whether you want it or not. At that time. To which my answer was, fuck you, I'm buying a PlayStation. Now I know now you, you can get the Xbox uh, Series S and Series X and you don't have to buy a Kinect. Not much other Kinect connect exists at the moment. But at that time, when the Xbox One first came out, it was you either have it with the Kinect or you don't have it. And my answer was, fuck you, I'm not having a camera in my house. That's why I don't have anybody Alexa shit in my house. I want to have something sitting there listening to me. Fuck off, you know? They will say, oh, we can turn it off. No, you fucking can't. Yes, you can say, don't listen, but what are you going to say then? What are you going to say, Alexa on, and it turns on? So obviously it was fucking listening. No. No, don't get me on that. <laughs> I've, I absolutely value and treasure my privacy. I will not have a camera or a fucking microphone in here. If I can't help it. I don't I don't mind like this now, because I can plug it in and talk for a while and then unplug it. But something that's on all the time, fuck off. No. So I've I've, I've said everything. I think I've said everything, yeah. Um arcades. So much love for arcades. Um I still live in Blackpool unfortunately. My god, there's a lot of problems around here. It really is gone down to gone it's gone it's gone to hell. It's, it has these days, it really has. But I can't get out, you know. No chance of moving. But it still says in town, arcade, arcade, there's not arcades, they're not arcades, my arse are arcades, they're bloody shitty bloody ticket machines and bloody, you know, bloody gambling machines and bloody uh, stupid winning stupid prizes machines, they're not arcades, my arse, there's no arcade, can you go, can you go in and buy have a game of Wither the War or fucking Mr. Do, can you ask? arcade, there's no arcade machines in there, but you stupid bloody Oh, don't get don't get me on that modern arcade because they're not arcades, not arcades. So yeah, a lot of love for true arcades. To me, the golden, absolute golden era is like 1980 to probably 88. For me, that is absolutely the cream, absolutely cream, with the best of it being by the, the mid 80s. Yeah. So what do I game on these days? What do I game on these days? Let me tell you. Um. I don't get. I have a P. I have a PC, as you can tell. You know, duh. Of course, I got a PC. I'm doing this. Don't game on it. I don't. I don't find it comfortable sitting at my desk having a game. Um. What do I game on? Uh, Steam Deck. Play games on that occasionally. Occasionally. Um. I have a handheld Spectrum, which I play Spectrum games on. Unfortunately, it's not next. It's just normal spectrum. So that and well, yeah, that's about it. So not not a great deal. Not, not a great deal. But yeah, I've waffled about arcades. I love them so much. Uh, computers I've had. I love them. I'll, I'll, I I never had an Amstrad. Never had an Amstrad. I bought a Spectrum once. I was given a plus three once as a, as a present. Uh, I've had a BBC twice. The second time, <laughs> I had to order it and said, we don't have any in stock, but can I have an Amstrad? And I said, no thanks, I'll wait for a BBC. So I had a BBC twice. I never had an Amstrad, never had one. Don't really, not something I really wanted to, you know? I'm not bashing it, I'm sure it's a nice machine, but it's not something I ever wanted. Um, never had a Vectrex. Now, that's one of my biggest regrets. I would love a Vectrex. I would love them. I really would. And... I was in town one day, I, I don't know what year it was, I really don't know what year it was, I couldn't tell you, but I went past one of these 
jo- uh, shops that sell all the bloody ex bloody shopping stuff. You know, people that stuff that's not, not sold, they pile it up and sell it cheap sort of thing. I forget what the shop was bloody called. Anyway, they don't just sell all, all kinds of bloody junk in there. I went past one day and they had a stack of Vectrex machines, all brand new. And they must have had like 30 or 40 of them all piled up. And they were selling them for 40 quid each. And me, like a moron, said, no, don't want one. Boy, do I regret that. <laughs> that was a major mistake. That was a major mistake. Because they're going like 700 quid on eBay. Not that I want to sell one. I just love to own one. You know, a Vectrex with a Vector graphics monitor. Oh, yeah. Never had one. Never had one. I would love one. Main master's got three, the greedy bastard. Alan, you greedy bastard. <laughs> got three, at least. In fact, we round to play on one for a bit. <laughs> so I think I've I think I've waffled enough now. Uh, you know what arcade games have loved? Uh, um, my history of arcade games, well, most of it. So much love for 80s arcade games. So much love for 8-bit computers. Uh, a lot of love for Commodore 64. A lot of love for the Atari. A lot of love for the BBC. A lot, of, a lot of love for the Spectrum. Yep. That's my time. My era. A lot of great time. So, that's me done. Thank you for listening to my utter bollocks. <laughs> if any of you got to, to the end, I will be amazed. And my God, you are so boring you're listening to me waffle for, what, 50 minutes? God, 50 minutes. Take me three days to upload this. <laughs> so, I say farewell for now. Take care. Bye-bye.